If you actually have strong algebra skills, you ought to be able to solve this problem. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the full solution in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. Okay, so here is our equation. So first things we want to the first thing we want to do is understand what does this mean. Okay, so we have four to some power, and uh, four to some power is going to be equal to 64. Now this power uh, of four here is expressed as this value right here, three x minus six. But this whole thing right here just represents a number. So four to some number is equal to 64. So what is that number? Well, what we can do here is use some basic trial and error. All right, so the first thing is we're like, well, what power of four will get us 64? Well, four to the first power is equal to four, right? So hopefully everyone knows that. Four to the second power is four times four, and of course that's 16, so four squared is 16. Now I'm looking for 64, so obviously, uh, four to the first is not the solution. Four to the second, well, we're going in the right direction, but how about four to the third? Well, four to the third power, in fact, is 64. It's four times four times four, which, of course, is 16 times four, which is indeed 64. So our exponent has to be three. So four to the third power is equal to 64, meaning that this whole value up here, this expression, is equal to three. All right, now at this point, if you're saying, oh yes, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I understand that. Well, then what we could do is figure out how to solve this equation right here for three. Okay, if we set this equal to three. So if four to the third power is equal to 64 and four to the three X minus six power is equal to 64, well then three X minus six must be equal to three. So let's go ahead and set this, uh, uh, these two things equal to one another, and let's do this right here. Okay, so uh, 3x minus 6 is equal to 3. Now, even if you didn't know basic algebra, what you could do is just start plugging in numbers here, right? So hopefully uh, you understand what 3x means. This means 3 multiplied by some number. So you might be able to, you know, plug in some numbers here. x is equal to 1. Well, let's see here. That would be 3 times 1. So three times one minus six, no, that's gonna give me a, a negative three, that's not equal to three. How about three times two? Well, three times two, that's gonna be six minus six, that'd be zero, no, that's not gonna work. How about three? Three times three is nine, nine minus six is three. Oh, that looks pretty good to me. So three is the correct answer. Now, if you have some basic algebra skills, again, you don't have to be an expert in algebra, you could solve this equation for x. So let's go do that right now. All right, so you can see I've already done this work. So 3x minus 6 is equal to 3. So what we need to do is add 6 to both sides of the equation, and then we're going to add down in a column manner. Now, if you need some uh, review with basic linear equations, uh, I'll give you some suggestions here in a second. But let's go and finish this up. So 3x plus nothing is 3x. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0, so we don't need to write that. And then 3 plus 6 is, of course, 9. All right, so we have 3x is equal to 9, and now we can solve this equation for x by dividing both sides of the equation by 3, which, of course, is 9 divided by 3, which is 3. Now, we kind of figured this out over here because we're kind of plugging in some numbers and seeing which one worked. So, e again, even if you didn't um, remember how to solve basic algebraic equations, if you just kind of use some common sense and trial and error, well, you figured this out. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another way we could do this problem. Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely gotta check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem and don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here, what we could do, and this is something that you will learn at uh, uh, maybe like at the Algebra 2 level, second year algebra, it's, these are the type of equations that you typically learn how to solve again after 
um, taking or completing one year of algebra. So if you're in pre-algebra or algebra one, uh, you may not have seen exponential equations at this level. So, but uh, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't understand how to do this problem. Okay, so another technique that we could uh, use here is to take four and 64 and write the bases here. Now remember, if we have two to the third power, this is the exponent and this is the base. Let me uh, actually give you another example, like four squared. So I can write four squared. I can write this base four as two squared. So four squared is the same thing as two squared squared. Now, one great technique uh, to, uh, that you can use to solve exponential equations uh, without the aid of a calculator is to uh, rewrite the bases as a power. Now, if you can write uh, the bases of both sides of this equation as a power of the same number, well, that is awesome. And of course, in this case, we can. So four is the same thing as, um, let me go and write this right here. Four is the same thing as two squared. So I wanna write uh, four as two squared because I can write 64 as a power of two uh, as well. That's two to the six. So two times two times two times two, that's one, two, three, four times two, that's five. This is 32 right here, times another two gives me uh, 64. So 64 is equal to two to the sixth power. So now what I've done is I've equated the bases. In other words, the bases are the same, and now I can equate the exponents right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now, and this particular technique is something that you definitely need to know if you're at a little bit more advanced level of algebra, but even if you have not studied this, hopefully this makes sense to you. Okay, so now, if the bases are the same, okay, we're saying that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. In other words, if I said two to the x is equal to two, or well, no, that's a seven, two to the seventh, Okay, here's an equation. Two to the x is equal to two to the seventh. Well, if this is the same number as this, well, x must be equal to seven. Well, same thing here. I'm saying that one power is equal to uh, another power and the bases are two. Uh, so therefore the exponents must be the same. So here we have uh, the equation two times three x minus six is equal to six. Okay, so now we can just simply solve this equation. Again, this is a, you know, not too, difficult in terms of the algebra here, but if you need some review, again, I'll give you some suggestions here in a second. All right, so two times three X is what? Well, that's six X. We have to use the, uh, the distributive property here. Two times negative six is a negative 12. So that's equal to six. So to solve this equation, we need to add 12 to both sides of the equation. So six plus 12 is 18. So I have six X is, uh, is equal to 18. So now I can divide both sides of the equation by six. So 18 divided by six is three. So X is equal to three. Okay, so let's go back over here. And with our first approach, okay, we still got the answer X is equal to three. And our second approach, we got the answer X is equal to three. All right, so those are two techniques they can use uh, to solve this exponential equation. Now I'm gonna show you a, a one that's a little bit more fancy. And if you have a, a scientific calculator handy, you can pull one up on your phone, by the way, if you have your cell phone, uh, you just have to put your calculator in, I think, scientific mode. Uh, you know, most cell phones have that option. Or even if you're obviously watching this on maybe a computer, you can just pull up a scientific calculator because we're going to need this button right here, the LOG button on your calculator. And if you ever wondered what that uh, uh, function does, well, I'm gonna show you that right now. When you uh, study, you know, this level of um, algebra, you have uh, different types, of, all different types of equations in algebra. What we're studying here is exponential equations because we're looking to solve for the variable and the exponent, okay? Now, when you have an exponential equation, you need to think in terms, okay, of logarithms, okay? Now, if you don't know what a logarithm is, this is an extremely important topic in math, and it has something to do with these buttons on your calculator, the LOG and the LN button, right? Very, very powerful stuff. So. Uh, I'm going to show you how to solve this equation uh, using logarithms. Now, if you've never, uh, you know, seen logarithms before, well, then this should be pretty interesting. We already know that the answer here is x is equal to 3. I gave you two methods that you could solve this uh, easy exponential equation uh, using uh, those particular techniques. But now, let's suppose that we had this type of equation. Uh, let me just make something up. 
how about like uh, uh, 9 to the x power is equal to uh, 12. Okay, 9 to the x power is equal to 12. Well, 9 to the first power is what? That's 9. 9 to the second power is 81. So uh, our answer is going to be pretty close to, to 1, right? It's going to be a decimal. So to solve this type of equation, we can't use the two techniques that I already showed you here. You're going to have to use logarithms. Okay, so when you're faced with an exponential equation, you need to use logarithms. And when you have a logarithmic equation, guess what? You need to use exponents because these two functions are inverses of one another. But again, if you've uh, never said this stuff, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to you. But let's go ahead and get into how we can solve this equation using logarithms. Okay, so a quick example of using logarithms. Again, if you need to know about any of this stuff, logarithms, exponential equations. As a matter of fact, let me just tell you right now, check out my Algebra 1 a course for just basic uh, algebra skills. Now, if you're not a math student and you want to relearn this stuff, check out my math skills rebuilder course. So those are for like the first two methods that we talked about, some basic review. Now, if you're at this level of math and you, and you need help with exponential equations, well then check out my algebra two or pre-calculus course. You'll find links to all of this stuff uh, in the description. Okay, so that is that. Now let's go ahead and get into this uh, equation, uh, solving it uh, using logarithms. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log of both sides, okay, the log of both sides. So uh, you can notice here that that's all I'm doing. Now I can do that when I have um, one power on one side of the equation and just a number on the other side. So if this particular equation wasn't written this way, you may have to do some, uh, some work to kind of get it cleaned up, if you will, to be ready to take the log of both sides. But again, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to teach you how to solve everything you need to know to solve logarithmic equations in this one little video. All right, but at this point, we can take the LOG of both sides. Okay, now in your calculator, if you have your calculator handy, the LOG of 64 is just a number, okay? It's a value. You can do that right now if you want to pause the video. So you can put the LOG of 64, that's a number. LOG of four is just a number. We call this the common logarithm. Again, this is a big, big topic. And I'm not even kind of addressing what a logarithm is, but just so you know, the LOG of a number is in fact a number in and of itself. Okay, now what do we do here? Well, what we need to do is use something called a property of logarithms. So when we take the uh, log of a power, what we can do, and this is an awesome little property, when we take the logarithm of a power, we could take the exponent and plop it right in front of the logarithm. And that's what we're gonna do right here. So we're gonna drop this three X minus six and put it right in front of the logarithm. Now remember, the log of a number, like right here, is a number. Okay, you can, get, you can get a decimal value or you can get some other value, but these are just numbers. So at this point, you know, you have an equation of 3x minus 6. Let's just make some numbers up. Maybe this was like multiplied by 5 and that was equal to 18, right? So this is just a simple algebraic equation at this point. So if you have, you know, uh, if you know how to solve linear equations in algebra, well, then you should be able to solve this equation, but we're not done yet. Okay, so we're not ready to do that. But just keep in mind that this stuff is not that scary, right? The LOG of 4 is a number, and the LOG of 64 is a number. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Well, the easiest way to solve this uh, equation at this point is to divide both sides of the equation by LOG of 4, okay? And when I do that, at the left-hand side, okay, uh, these LOG of 4s are going to cross cancel. So I'm just going to be left with 3x minus 6. And then here I have LOG of uh, 64 divided by LOG of 4. And now we're going to put this into our calculator, all right? So hopefully you have a scientific calculator available to you. And this is our equation. We have 3x minus 6 is equal to this uh, log of 64 divided by log of 4. And when you put this into your calculator, the answer is going to be 3, okay? So if a log of 64 divided by a log of 4, the answer is 3. And now we have a lovely basic linear equation, which we can solve rather easily. So 3x minus 6 is equal to 3. I'm going to add 6 to both sides of the equation. I get 3x is equal to 9. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 3. I get x is equal to 3, which of course is the same answer. Okay, so three different techniques or methods you can use. Really, the whole idea here 
is that you need to understand how to solve exponential equations. But this is a topic that comes up uh, again, let me just kind of show you real quick. So you have like pre-algebra, algebra one, and then you have courses that are like algebra two, or some of you that might be in college, like college algebra or intermediate algebra, uh, or maybe even college pre-algebra, no, not really so much. But uh, let me just kind of put another course here, pre-calculus. Okay. So these are the typical type of courses that most people take as they progress through math. So in pre-algebra, you learn how to solve real basic equations like 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. In algebra 1, you learn how to solve much more different type of equations like systems of equations, quadratic equations like 3x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. So, you know, you really step up your game uh, in algebra 1 in terms of your ability to solve various types of equations. But in Algebra 1, you typically don't learn about logarithms and things like that. This is um, generally taught at the Algebra 2, College Algebra, or Intermediate Algebra level. Okay, so if you're at these levels, and if you've never seen this before, well, this is what you have to look forward to. Now, after you finish these courses, the next course you get into is like pre-calculus. Okay, so this course right here is obviously the course you need before you get into uh, calculus. And uh, most people don't need to take pre-calculus unless you're actually going into, you know, a college major um, that involves calculus, right? Like STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. But if you have a chance to take this course, it is a fantastic course and a very challenging course at that. So I have all these courses uh, with the exception of calculus. You can find links to those in the description below. Now, um, if you are not a math student, but you're like, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I kind of like to relearn this stuff. Well, uh, check out uh, for this level of math, okay? Check out my math skill uh, rebuilders course, okay? I definitely teach you everything in here, a lot of what's in here, and a lot of what's in here. Not 100% everything, but you'll definitely get a good review of this stuff. And of course, if you finish all this, then you um, have a good shot of uh, you know doing well in pre-calculus. Pre-calculus, very tough course, uh, and uh, a big part of pre-calculus is learning trigonometry to include advanced, trig uh, advanced trigonometry. Okay, so don't want to make this video too much longer, but hopefully, you know, you're like, you know what, I was able to figure this out just using some basic math. And I always like to kind of give people an opportunity or encourage people, hey, don't sell yourself short on being able to figure out a math problem because a lot of the times you can figure out the solution just using some trial and error, some common sense. And uh, I think the main idea there is, you know what, when you're faced with a math problem, you know, just keep trying, don't give up, uh, but you're not gonna know if you can solve it or not unless you try. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.